Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video. Today, we have a ton of interesting things to talk about. So stick around, enjoy the show. All right. First of all, Mr. Intuitive said over on Twitter, I love how Gasparino had to say to John Deaton, never saw you sue any of these other large companies before. A, it's called David versus Goliath. B. Always fear a silent savage who waits for his day to serve the people. We were all on TV today. A very important thing for every XRP holder to understand is that the majority of the people in this world still think that the SEC will win. And if you actually pull up a couple of surveys here, you'll notice that in, in reality, the majority of people have a bias towards the SEC winning or thinking that Ripple is in the wrong. And that's also why this John Deaton intervention, basically, or John Deaton kind of testing the SEC here, is basically like the underdog winning. The SEC is shouting out all over the internet time and time again. They have yet to, to lose a crypto case, basically. They don't lose crypto case because they always settle or always win in some way, shape, or form. And they've brought justice to 75 of these cases by now. A thing, which again, a lot of people are over or overlooking right now, is that a lot of these cases are nothing alike with Ripple. And the fact stays and remains that John Deaton is coming in with 22 other thousand crypto hollers to say that something ain't right. But most importantly, that there was most likely or potentially a conflict of interest somewhere. And that's the fun part about it. It's, it's so much bigger than just a Ripple v. SEC lawsuit. It's, it's about the crypto space as a whole. And that's, I think, also why as more and more people get introduced to it and actually learn about what it is for and what is being discussed, like, for example, through Fox here now, They'll actually switch sides. So on face value, a lot of these guys are on the SEC side because that's logical. You know, you're biased to choose the government in being right over some some you know business guys over in California, San Francisco. I I definitely understand that. <laughs> I definitely understand that. If if I were to ask my mom right now, all right, who's 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 the who's the the thief here? Basically, these shady business guys over in San Francisco. Or, you know, the government saying they scam people. Who's right on that one? I mean, most people will call say the government's right. However, as you get infatuated with the case or learn more, you're like, well, no, really. It's actually, yeah, well, let's, let's, let's not go into the conclusions right there. But you guys get my drift, huh? It's kind of funny. All right, then Ty G XRP, I, I hope, Ty, Ty G, said on Twitter, Arthur Brito activated an account for Vitalik Buterin back in 2013. Vitalik tried to be an internet ripple, but his visa fell through in 2013. It looks like a couple ripple wallets were sending him some XRP too. So that's actually kind of a fun little story about Vitalik's history with ripple. You can, of course, if you just, I don't have to, uh, I usually have a second screen. Now I don't. If you type in ripple Vitalik Buterin as an example, I'll type it in on my phone here just to see what the search results are you'll see that Vitalik basically changed his mind quite significantly uh, about Ripple basically throughout the last couple of years. And it's, it's kind of funny from being kind of excited and interested in Ripple because, again, it's been there kind of before um, Ethereum to basically becoming very, very negative about it from December 2020 on forward. Ever since Ripple basically got sued or even just a little bit before that, he's calling it a shit coin. He's putting up a lot of negativity towards XRP, basically. It just basically changed his mind 189 degrees, uh, which is interesting. Some people have said that it's it's all because, you know, the Ripple guys, and, and that's what Vitalik maybe knew, are, are going to be taking Ethereum down with them. Some are saying because yeah, there's so many different theories about it, but you can already kind of guess why Vitalik has now changed his mind at least. But the, the, the fun part, I guess, stays about it. Why is he calling it a shitcoin now when in reality we all know he, he really wasn't that negative about it in the past? He really wasn't. And we're talking about freaking years and years and years ago. So what changed and when and, and why? 
All right, Grayscale outlines Cardano's key pros and cons in the report. Yeah, I actually had this open in my last video, but I kind of forgot to go over it, actually. So, on my own, if I had to put it up here, what are the good sides about Cardano? What are the bad sides? Good side is it's new. So, there's a lot of potential to become, you know, one of the bigger projects on there if, you, if you're a developer. Two is it's new. So, you have a good chance of actually getting some very, very, for example, cheap deals on new NFTs and things like that. Uh, even though NFTs have been around for a little while, it's still relatively new in comparison to Ethereum. And so what I mean with that is that a lot of these native Cardano things will be at the start. So it's like a new epoch. <laughs> wow. If you guys know, you know, all right? No pun intended, but it's a new epoch. Um, and so it's basically new for everybody, right? So you have a fresh start, basically. You can have a fresh start where Ethereum, of course, was uh, so freaking long ago. Another good part I would say is it's, I guess better in a lot of more in a lot of ways. It's more decentralized from some perspective. Some people have said, or at least planning to become. It has a lot of good plans and short-term plans, but most importantly, planned out plans. In the Ethereum sense, it's like ah, Ethereum 2.0 is coming up. Uh, maybe eventually, between, between now and one and a half year, maybe uh, we'll see. Maybe maybe somewhere at the end of this year, maybe next year, maybe the day of year afterwards, we'll see. With Cardano, it's like well. We have this planned. Um, within a couple of months, we'll get this done. Within a couple of months, we'll get this done. We'll get the and they have phases and everything like that. It's just it's a little bit different from Ethereum. Uh, but I guess the comparison is also with, for example, things like Solana and whatnot. And I'm gonna always say, guys, there's a a very good reason for any crypto project to thrive. Even Litecoin has its appeal. That's strange coming from the DSTBC because I always shit on Litecoin because I don't like the coin. <laughs> Uh, even though I hold it, funny enough, every coin has its has its has its positive sides. So to kind of go over the market cap for for you, Bitcoin oldest, Ethereum oldest platformer, BNB, extremely potent in the sense that it's connected to an exchange, the biggest exchange at that. Ooh, look at that! It just slipped over. Cardano just flipped BNB. It's kind of funny. It's, it happened right in front of our eyes. That's uh, interesting. All right, so BNB, extremely potent in the sense that it's connected to an exchange, but also just a cheaper version of Ethereum, and it's literal copy with just less nodes. So what that means is e BNB, the Binance Smart Chain, can basically do almost anything that Ethereum can, uh, but cheaper because it's less uh, decentralized. It's just more centralized. Uh, Cardano, again, just newer sort of crypto, so a newer idea, uh, more thought out, peer-reviewed approach, just completely different. USDT, I guess that's not really crypto. I don't really see it that way. XP, the payment token, best for what it wants to do. Solana, again, extreme throughput. Uh, now, it did go down for a little bit, but you guys get the idea. And so we can go on for forever and ever and ever just going over these. They all have their own appeal. They all have their own reason for you know, basically thriving. Um, and that's basically what I wanted to put out on that regard. They all have their own thing. So, again, Cardano is also going to be on the same line. Now, it's kind of funny that Cardano... Ooh, BNB is back up on top. Huh? All right, the infrastructure bill we kind of already talked about in the previous video. I just wanted to say that there's some uh, some contradictory thoughts about that coming out. There needs to be some decisions made. And I, I've told you guys before in the video as well, some major FUD could be coming out as it's going to be a big battle over who's got the regulatory body for it. So, is it going to be the CFTC? Is it going to be the SEC or what? Um, how would these different bodies regulated basically or how would these different bodies let's say like this value it because we've seen before that the irs the sec and uh, uh, fincen can all see a company or a crypto as something different for example the irs can see it as a commodity while the sec sees it as a security while fincen sees it as a currency and there is no problem in that in the u.s it's kind of funny right but i think a decision needs to be made on that to change it basically uh, but then again, also, are there going to be different sorts of crypto? Like, okay, some are payment tokens slash uh, basically standard utility tokens slash security tokens slash... Blah, 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 or is it going to be all falling under either security token or currency? You know, or, or what is it going to be? Some decisions need to be made and it's going to happen pretty quickly because they have to. What will it take for Bitcoin to cross $77,000 by the end of October? Well, after trading in the lower $40,000 bracket throughout the last week, Bitcoin's price received the push it was waiting for. So, from my own personal perspective, there's actually not really much that it's going to take for Bitcoin to get to these levels. And again, guys, to be completely honest with you, I think it's going to happen rather shortly. 
there are a couple of waves of just some negativity that I've been warning you guys for. And I'm still kind of on that notion of saying, hey, be careful, be very freaking careful. But you know, to put up a baseline here, I do honestly expect things to go really, really well over the next couple of months as I've been shouting for the last couple of days. Even though there might be one instance of a lot of fear, I don't think it's going to stop the big run, which we are witnessing. So 70,000, it can definitely still happen throughout this year. It's really not that crazy. I even think higher than that could happen. Uh, I think stock to flow model is showing 140,000 at the end of the year, something like that. But here he's, he, uh, let's quickly see now. Bitcoin could reach 288,000 or even higher than the recent si or the current cycle. The Bitcoin price is now nearly at 50,000, which is five times from 10,000. Okay, nice observation. Another five times takes us right to 288,000, which is an average. Uh, now, even though that's very flawed or um, very strange logic, in my own opinion, oh, just because it did five times, it's going to do it again. That, that really doesn't work for me. From a certain perspective, it also kind of does. And that, that what I mean with that is just saying to me that the crypto market is going to grow by five times is like, oh, yeah, of course, obviously. Saying, oh, it did five times, so it's going to do it again, that doesn't work for me, right? But again, if you look from a different perspective, saying it's going to grow five times from here, it's like, hmm, will five times more people know about it? Yes, that's already enough, I guess, for the price justification. Will 20 times more people know about it? Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And I guess that's already kind of enough information, right? Because it's a numbers game, ultimately, anyway, I think. It's like, it's it's so easy to justify a five times gains in, in crypto, basically, because it's so early still. And I love saying it's early. A lot of people criticize me for it, saying, oh, Bitcoin has been around for 12 years, or oh, Bitcoin has seen $60,000. It's not early anymore. It just depends on perspective. Is it really still early, if you ask me? All right. France authorities warn residents against unauthorized crypto websites. I guess it's a good thing, right? You can't really say anything negative about that. I can say I'm pretty happy. <laughs> a lot of countries are actually doing this, to be honest with you. But, I mean, yeah, I, can't, I can't really see any reason to make a um, a complete article out of it or why we should make such a big fuzz about it. I guess it just shows that the French authorities care. I guess that's kind of good. Um, this I don't really understand at all. Tax dodging Cardano traders come under scrutiny in Japan. I mean, doesn't that speak for itself? It, it puts tax dodging in the title. Those guys that are dodging tax are coming under scrutiny. What? Come on. A slew of Japanese Cardano traders managed to bag big profits but failed to pay taxes. Yeah. Duh, don't do that. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> what can I say about this? You don't pay your tax, you get in trouble. Huh? What? <laughs> what a... These guys are like, what just what, what just happened? I didn't pay my tax and I'm in trouble? Really? Oh, I love this so much. I love reading these articles sometimes. It's like, people don't expect bad things to happen to them when they do bad things. What? Come on. <sighs> okay, a recent report by financial um, Japanese outlet Nikkei says that Japan's tax link agencies have zeroed in a, on a tax dodging cryptocurrency trader. After a large-scale audit in the Kanto region and uh, Pokemon and other parts of the country, it was discovered they had failed to pay 1.4 billion yen or 12.6 million bucks. According to a person involved in the investigation, individuals from such cities such as Saitama, Tochigi, Gunma, Niigata, and Nagano, hey, I tried my best, mainly profited off of buying and selling Cardano. Tax authorities have identified, you know, 6 million bucks in, wait a minute, something ain't right right here. Either it is six million yen, which is six hundred and seven, you know, six hundred and seventy. No, that also doesn't work. There's something wrong right here. All right, it might be six point seven million yen and six hundred thousand dollars, but or I'm stupid. No, 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 I'm definitely not. This just this doesn't work. Or it's just sixty thousand dollars and they went wrong. This whole story is a little bit strange, though, guys. So they're talking here about 1.4 billion yen, 12.6 million dollars. Okay, that sounds reasonable to me in terms of conversion. I thought uh, 100 yen was about a dollar, so that that kind of or about a about a euro, about a dollar, whatever, about one of those things ish. So that kind of works. This very strange, but I also don't get the story anymore a little bit because of it. All I wanted to kind of laugh about though was um, you play stupid games, you get stupid prizes, and don't don't ex 
Don't act strange if you get caught for doing something which is just stupid, huh? You know what my tax man always used to tell me? And again, I don't really have a dedicated person too much for it, but you know what my tax man used to always tell me, basically? Or any, any sane person, really, for that matter. Any person I've talked to with money, they always tell me, whenever you, 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 know, you get first into taxes, you're like, oh, it's not fun to pay tax. And the more tax it gets, the less fun it gets because it's the more money you have to pay for, for kind of nothing it feels like, huh? And the person, and I've heard this from different people, tell you, yeah, but at least you're making the money, right? If you have to pay that amount of taxes, you're earning the money to pay that amount. And even though in the Netherlands, it's freaking ridiculous. At one point, you have to pay freaking 52% on your money, depending, of course, how you structure it. You're still making the money, though, right? So even though you have to give half of it away, you're still making... Oh, oops. You're still making money. And I guess that's something to kind of hold dearly as well when you're thinking about evading some stuff. Guys, it's in almost any different scenario that I can think of. It is better to just pay whatever you you have to and, and just endure the consequences than play around with this game that is called the IR mother freaking S um, and, and just win stupid prizes, basically. Just my personal reminder for you guys that very often, it's just not worth it. For all the little extra enjoyment that you were supposed to get or going to get from that extra money, the stress, anything along those lines, it ain't worth it, all right? Almost never. Maybe in your specific scenario, I don't know. But in almost any other person out there, it ain't worth it. All right. Singapore bullish on crypto grants licenses to two crypto exchanges. Very, very nice. Progress in Singapore is going well. And then, uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Funny little story. Uh, funny. Debatable. I wonder what you guys would do. So let me know in the comments section down below. A crypto CEO begging his users to return around 90 million bucks he mistakenly sent to them. What would you do? If you just received 90 million bucks, would you send it back? Yes or no? So the story actually becomes a little bit more intricate because he's kind of saying keep 10%, which is already me thinking like, oh, would I send it back then if I could keep 10%? From another perspective, it's like, well, he's saying it's otherwise being reported as income and most of you are doxxed. Huh. I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to mean. I, I guess what he means is all this money is basically... No, I'm not exactly sure why he would say the last part here. It's kind of strange on its own. But I, th I think maybe because it, it is from, you know, uh, basically a fund that this the, the, the person that they sent it to got paid from. And so they're basically giving out all the details then from all the persons whom we got stolen from. I'm not exactly sure why he would do that then. We're kind of, you know, shooting yourself in the leg. However, afterwards he said, you know, made a little bit of a mistake from my hostile tweet right there. And he just meant, you know, I, I want the money back because a lot of people are losing out on their money. However, David Swartz came in to say it's taxable income already. How do people who return funds avoid paying income tax on the money they return? If you want U.S. recipients to pay the funds back, you're going to need to get a legal opinion that they can rely on that explains how they can justify to the IRS as anything other than them spending the funds for their own benefit. You know, and I, I kind of sometimes feel as if this is really true and sometimes I feel as if it's not because I'm sometimes thinking too. You know, any sane person, you know, would logically be like, I got money, I send it back. And the judge would be like, oh, okay, so there's no income then, it's zero, right? That's, again, logical thinking person. System thinking is, no, you had $90 million worth of income and $90 million worth of expenses, but show those expenses because, well, they have to be, you know, credited properly, basically, and all that stuff. And so, that's really a difficult story right there, right? It's really a difficult battle because from a certain perspective, it is a risk that you're taking because if you're sending money back, you can't really attribute for that being a cost because where did you send the money to? To the person who sent you? Yeah, but who sent you? And then you might even get into trouble for just getting some freaking shady money. Oh, yeah. It's an annoying story. It's a difficult story. But that's the way in which we live right now. I think eventually this will fix itself partially. I don't know if the person will actually send the money back. We can't check it. But I, I guess because I haven't heard anything about it just quite yet, I'm assuming no money was sent back. Anyone who returns comp to the community is an alien giga chad. And if a squad of the alien giga chad summoning will appear in honor and recognition of deeds and higher as rarity by the most gigantic chance that walk the metaverse. Uh, 
Okay, so what I'm assuming now is that people who are using comp basically got sent money. So it's not like every just one person got sent ninety million dollars. Huh. But okay, I haven't really read too much about it. I just saw that little partner and got kind of interested in it. The total comp at risk approximately four hundred thousand, of which one hundred thirty six thousand is still in the controller, and one hundred seventeen thousand has been returned to the community so far. Hmm. Would you return the money if you... Let's say it like this. Would you return money if you got it? Let me know in the comments down below. See you guys again in another crypto video. Guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well, though. I'm trying to hit 150k subs by the end of the year, so subscribe.